building this pipe layer. Uh, well, I found one online I could buy for 125 bucks, but it's just the back part, and I'd have to modify the brackets for the front part. So I thought, well, I'll just build my own. Um, I ended up going to an exhaust shop, and this is two-inch anodized or aluminized steel, rather. And I probably would have gone with the one-half inch to make it a little bit narrower, but it was a lot thinner. So I wanted to be able to weld one-eighth strap onto this, and I talked to the guy about it. He says, yeah, if you're going to weld one-eighth strap, go ahead and go with the two-inch. My only worry is it's a little bit wider than this. The subsoiler here, this is the tractor supply subsoiler. can't remember if it's tartar or county line. I think it's county line. Um, this is one inches wide right here. This is one inch wide. So this pipe is two inches wide on the outside. So it's a half inch here and a half inch here wider. So it'll be a little bit more for the tractor to drag through, a little bit more resistance. But it never had trouble with the subsoiler. What it did have trouble with was, I mean not trouble with, but it was a lot harder for the tractor to pull was this middle buster. Um, and I actually got this middle buster blade separate and put it on the subsoiler. Now the middle buster blade, the middle buster, if you buy it, doesn't have as long as a shaft. So it wasn't as tall as this. And I bought that middle buster blade to put on the subsoiler so I can run it, the sub, the middle buster, deeper. I wanted to be able to cut dirt really deep, as deep as I could. Well, it turned out that my 55 horsepower turbocharged tractor doesn't pull it through everything at that at full depth. It'll pull the subsoiler blade through at full depth, though. So. I I saved a little bit of money by buying just the blade of the middle buster, but <clears throat> um, it's not hard to change it over. It's just two bolts. But in any event, um, I thought about running the middle buster because it would give, definitely give me a better cut way down below, but as deep as I want to run, I want to run this pipe as deep as I can, of course. And uh, I'll just be able to run it deeper with the subsoiler. So we're talking, and I can bury the subsoiler pretty much up to the... So that's nine... That's about 17 inches from here to here, from here to here. That's about 17 inches. So 18, 16, 17 inches. And then when you count the tip, it's probably getting down to about 19 inches. So anyway, this pipe that I had made at the um, exhaust shop, he charged me eight bucks for to bend it and to cut it. And the, the whole thing was eight bucks. So I was like, well, <laughs> I can't beat that. As a backup plan, I got... This is EMT from Home Depot. It's uh, one and a quarter. This is a 90 degree elbow, one and a quarter. And I thought, well, if my plan here doesn't work out, or if that's too wide or too thick, then inch and a quarter will definitely be able to pull, will definitely be able to pull it behind the tractor. Um, I mean, it shouldn't cause any more resistance than the actual subsoiler uh, shaft there itself, okay? So I just bought these to connect it with, and then I realized that um, these probably aren't going to be strong enough, so I'll probably sleeve it on the long pipe here on the end, and then put one of these angles on at the bottom, and then just tack weld around them so it doesn't slip out. Because if this slips out, that's going to be a pain in the butt to try to fix, to dig up, and what a pain in the butt. So I don't want to do that. So anyway, I'm going to try this exhaust pipe first. I didn't angle it at quite 90 degrees. It's an 80 degree bend. Um, we did lose a little bit of space here, um, internal diameter, but that's not too much, I don't think, because it's two inches. The inch and a half, I was worried I'd lose too much. And then the other thing was, I've got 600 feet of run to do in one spot. And I have two 500 foot spools, I got two two different areas to do that are pretty long, and one's 600 feet, so I'll have to do 500 plus one of those 100s there. And I was gonna use one of these to connect it with, and I also wanna make sure that this will go down it. Um, so here's the truth, see if this will make the bend. Okay, came out the bottom. There it is, so that tells me that that'll make the bend really easily. So I can connect my pipes when I get low on, I can connect my pipes with that and that'll still make the bend. Okay, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mark my straps here, I'll weld this up and um, weld some straps on. I think I'm gonna put a strap here and a strap here and a strap here and 
And I think that's going to be it. I don't think I need to put one up here because this will just be pushed up against this as the subsoiler drags this through the ground. This is going to be tried to pull, be pulled that direction, which should drive this this direction, if that makes sense. So that's my thinking anyway. <laughs> I might rip it off and have to rebuild it. Who knows? But I think three, uh, three uh, straps um, should do it, and I'll be able to tighten them down and cinch them down, and uh, we'll find out.